All right, class, we are going to cover battles of the American Revolution. Here we go. First one, first battle, the Battle of Washington and Concord. If you have the date, first battle of the Revolution, the British are marching uh, there. They want to capture weapons that the Patriots have, or they call them rebels, and capture some of their leaders. Okay? This is where we get the story of Paul Revere. He wasn't the only one riding and warning the colonists. Okay? And he didn't say the Redcoats are coming. He said the British are coming. Or the, the British forces are coming. You know. Anyway, um, they get to Lexington Common. By that time, a group of militia have shown up on the green. They are outnumbered. And both sides are just standing there milling around. The British order the militia to disband, to disperse. They don't. We still do not know who fired first, but a shot goes off. So then both start, start firing. The British, much more well-trained, are shooting volley after volley at the militia. And when it's all done, 90 colonists eventually die after these, this basically two-day battle. Anyway, the, the colonists get forced from the field and scatter because they're just outnumbered. Um, the British then march on to Concord where they're hoping to get weapons, capture weapons and leaders. Nothing's there. They then have the 18 mile march back to Boston. During this time, the militiamen are harassing them. They're firing from fences, behind trees. Um, one thing we know is the militia were not very accurate. Um, some estimates say the militia did uh, 3,500 shots at the British and all told they killed 250 British. The colonists all together lost 90. So this was, by numbers, a victory for the Americans, but it's more famous as the shot heard around the world. This is the first colony that has stepped up to fight against Great Britain. And I have a link here on the bottom if you want to get more information on this. The Battle of Bunker Hill. Here's the date. It's actually not fought on Bunker Hill. It's fought on Breed's Hill. Bunker Hill is right next to it, so they had the, the location wrong. The goal is for the British to capture the high ground around Boston. If you own the high ground, you control Boston because you can put cannons on there and you can shoot down on the city and the harbor. So it would be colonists owned it. So the British need that hill. So they attack up it three times. The first two times they are repulsed with heavy losses. When the third time they're coming, the American commander famously says, don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. And the reason he's saying that is because they are so low on ammunition. We can't lose any of this stuff. Anyway, the colonists start to run out of ammunition. They have to give up the field. They have to leave the battle. So the British take the hill. So technically, the Battle of Bunker Hill is a British victory. However, the British lose 1,000 soldiers, the Patriots, 370. So, number-wise, another victory for the colonies. Here's a reenactment at Bunker Hill. Here's the Bunker Hill Monument on top. And this is kind of a crude drawing here. You got the British attacking up, the colonists here with a fortified wall, kind of like a glorified ditch, shooting down, and they're able, you can see, to take up more, because it just takes longer to march up a hill. Okay, next we have the Battle of Long Island. Also known as the Battle of Brooklyn or the Battle of Brooklyn Heights. All right, you have the dates here. It's three days. The British want to take over the city of New York. It's an important port, and it's a large city in the colonies. Washington has troops on Long Island, and the British land troops on Long Island, and they actually attack from one side. He pushes it back. They come from another side, and they're just kind of facing off, and there's a little bit of an attack. But they don't know that the British come around on a third side. So Washington is outnumbered, and he's surrounded on three sides. The British don't attack because they know he's surrounded, and they're just going to have him surrender in the morning. What he does is he flees across the East River under the cover. Luckily for him, it was really dark, it was raining, and it was foggy. And he's able to escape. If Washington does not escape the Battle of Long Island with his army. We're going to lose the battle. We're going to lose our army. And this would basically end the American Revolution because our one big army would have been crushed. This is a map. You see the British land here. 
you got one side here, one side here, one side here, and he's basically surrounded on three sides. He flees this way under the cover of darkness, rain, and fog. Okay, the Battle of Trenton. This is the day after Christmas in 1776. Washington crosses the Delaware. Christmas night, this is a famous painting of it. There's many things wrong and inaccurate with this painting, however. And he launches a surprise attack on the Hessian mercenaries. This is an army paid by the British to fight in the war. Very little loss of life. They actually catch some Hessians asleep in their bed. He captures large numbers of weapons and supplies. And it's just a great tactical surprise victory. And the crossing of the Delaware. Well, here's the Delaware. He crosses down there. Over here. It just surprises the Hessians. Okay? He actually crosses up here and marches down. Okay. This is going to be the last battle to round out the first session of battles for the American Revolution. I'll do another video that color covers the rest of them. The Battle of Princeton. So Cornwallis is mad. And Cornwallis is one of the, the leaders of the British Army. He's mad about this loss at Trenton. So he's going to send his forces to go crush Washington and his army. Washington knows he's outnumbered. He knows he can't fight against Cornwallis head to head because he's going to lose. So what's he do? He orders his soldiers to leave the campfires burning, and he leaves some soldiers behind to make a racket and noise like there's a lot of people there. And then they sneak out around the British. They actually um, wrap the wheels of their carts and cloth to muffle the sound of the wood. And he marches through the night to Princeton, and he attacks the rear guard of the British. And the British were outnumbered five to one. So he... Big victory there. Only 40 Patriots are killed. 275 British are killed. Um, and because of that, with their rear guard being cut off like that, the British have to abandon the colony of New Jersey, or what we would call the state of New Jersey. So these are the first major battles of the American Revolution. You see we have all different kinds. And stay tuned for the next episode, which is American Revolution Battles Number 2.